Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm a Ukraine Canadian. Today's September 15th, 2023, and let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? This is, this is going to be a very quick update, so I'm going to be brief, but to the point. So, in Bakhmut, some really good developments today. The Ukrainian forces have officially liberated the village of Andrivka and are also in the process of liberating Klishivka. Most likely by tomorrow, a few days, Klishivka will also be fully liberated. Now again, both of these villages have been completely pulverized, so there are no more, but this is still important to bring the Ukrainians closer to taking Bakhmut. And also allegedly, the Ukrainian forces have completely decimated the 72nd Rifle Brigade that was tasked to defend Andreevka. So there are pretty much no more. That again is weakening the Russian uh, defenses in the south and also the 83rd uh, Air Assault Brigade has been seen today fleeing the northern part of Klyshivka. So they're also been severely weakened. You can see that the Russians are going to do everything possible to defend the south of Bakhmut. They know that this is going to make them very exposed in the south and it's going to bring the Ukrainians much closer to Bakhmut within the city center and even uh, potentially taking Bakhmut within this year. It still remains to be seen if that's going to be possible, but Ukraine is obviously going to uh, liberate Bakhmut eventually. But you can see that the Russians have brigades and entire division, Russian division in Kordyumivka. So they have over 30,000 soldiers still here uh, defending uh, the south of Bakhmut. So the task ahead is monumental. It's going to be difficult, but you can see that the Russians are already running away here. So the next step is for the Ukrainian force to take Opitne, and the village of Odradivka. So we'll see how quickly they'll be able they'll be able to do that. And uh, I'll keep you updated as the Ukrainians advance further in Bakhmut. The other big update I wanted to make is in Crimea. And I imagine most of you guys have already seen what happened in Sevastopol a few nights ago. So the Ukrainian forces have managed to not only destroy and completely damage and completely destroy a Russian ship that was stationed in Sevastopol in the dry docks, but also a uh, Rostov-on-Don submarine, uh, which, was also, which was also stationed in this dry dock. So a fantastic operation on the Ukraine side. And again, it shows the brilliant um, operations that Ukraine is conducting. Everything is a sequence. There is a reason to what uh, to every operation that Ukraine is doing. And what I'm referring to is obviously the operation that the Ukrainians have conducted last month to liberating um, the oil drilling and gas drilling platforms in the Black Sea. So the Boyko Towers that the Ukrainian forces have liberated somewhere between, between Snake Island and the Crimean Peninsula. And so that liberation, that operation was meant to not only liberate uh, the oil drilling platforms or the gas drilling platforms, my mistake, uh, but also because these platforms had Russian electronic warfare systems stationed on them and also anti-air defense systems that were stationed on them. So Ukraine essentially liberated them to make the job easier to then attack Sevastopol, attack Yevpatoria and other crucial uh, cities in the Crimean uh, Peninsula where the Russians are currently stationed. Now, not only did the Ukrainians uh, destroy very, very expensive, a very expensive ship, they also destroyed a submarine. And this is the first reported loss of a submarine uh, in the last 40 years. The last time this was reported was in the Falkland Wars between Argentina and England, where Argentina lost a submarine to England. And the most embarrassing thing is that Russia lost the submarine, which costs hundreds of millions of dollars, to a country that does not have a navy. So that is also very funny. Additionally, the Russians have lost a battery of S-400s in Yevpatoria. And that was as of two nights ago, if I remember correctly. So the Ukrainians have launched a huge missile attack again, uh, Yevpatoria, where there were a lot of S-400s and they've destroyed a few of them. And satellite imagery also confirms that. So this is very, very significant. And yet again, you know, don't expect the Russians to change their tactics. It's not because the Ukrainians have damaged hundreds of millions of dollars worth of equipment, of ships, that the Russians are somehow going to leave Crimea. Let's remember Chernobyevka, which is the best example I can bring forth to you guys to indicate the uh, fallacy that the Russians, um, basically the sunk cost fallacy that the Russians are in. 
despite the fact that in Chornobayevka, the Ukrainians have constantly attacked the Russians. They've decimated them dozens of times. The Russians still kept on moving equipment, supplies, helicopters, and the same story kept on happening. It became a running joke. But the Russians kept on doing the same thing, right? So Chornobayevka became a joke. And soon enough, Crimea, Sevastopol, Yevpatoria, and all the other cities are going to be the same, uh, are going to be following the same story. The Ukrainians are going to continue uh, hitting Russians. And because they have pretty much no defense, they don't have the choice but to take it. So that's very positive. It pressurizes the Russians. It makes them feel psychologically uncomfortable, anxious. But they won't, the, they won't have the choice but to continue on with the same tactics. And the last little update is that a few patrol ships as well were harassed by the Ukrainian unmanned sea vessels uh, the last few nights. And again, that's, this is a result of not only weakening the entire air defense systems, but also the lack of control over the oil, dr oil drilling platforms in the Black Sea. So the Ukrainians can feel much more safer operating their USVs, the sea babies, as they call them, in the Black Sea and harassing Russian patrol ships. Now, there's been a lot of videos that were released in the last few days uh, of Ukrainian USVs trying to attack the ships. And unfortunately, it seems like they were not successful, but expect many more of these videos in the future and more successful attacks against Russian ships. So that's the video for today, guys. Um, so far, I'm seeing a lot more attacks in the Black Sea. And uh, I'm assuming that in the future, there's going to be a lot more destruction uh, of Russian ships and submarines, hopefully. So thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my updates. And I will see you guys in the next one. Slava Ukraini.